Not a huge difference there. And in my opinion, I don't know if it's really worth paying the additional money. What is going on everybody, it is Mike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm super glad that you are with me today because we are unboxing the new Mac Studio. This is the M1 Ultra, complete, complete overkill for what I need, but I am really interested in it. More so from the fact that I know if I open it, I'm gonna keep it, but I don't know. I really wanna unbox it, I wanna see what it's like, I wanna see what it's gonna be like to edit this video. So let's get on with the unboxing. This is gonna be a purchase I know I regret because I'm gonna to wanna to keep it. Uh, this is the 64 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte SSD with the M1 Ultra. So this is the $39.99 price point for the M1 Ultra in Mac Studio. Now, if we see here, it's got the same fabric handle that we saw on the studio display and on the Pro Display XDR. Really nice here. We're gonna open this up. That's a great sound, don't you think? Wow, that's, that's pretty neat. You have this very intuitive box design where all you do is push out, pull the sides open, pull the top up, and out comes, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. I did not expect it to weigh this much. It is so heavy. Wow. All right, let's put this down here for a second. Oh my gosh, that is so heavy. You have this braided power cable, which is obviously removable. What else do we have here? And we have some documentation here. But that looks just to be about it. This is where your money went. This is your money saying goodbye. <laughs> so we have these two uh, kind of quick start guides and we have one large. Come on. One large Apple sticker. Hmm. Bigger than that. So very cool. So the reason why I'm saying that I'm going to regret this is because I have a brand new 2021 MacBook Pro 16 inch with M1 Max. I, I, this is like complete overkill. I don't edit in 8K footage or I don't shoot 8K. Everything I shoot here is 4K, even though it is ProRes, but still there shouldn't necessarily be that big of a deal with this. I, I can't believe how heavy this is. All right, just want to see what this weighs. 3,462 grams, seven pounds, 10 ounces for the Mac Studio with M1 Ultra. Okay, that's, that's a beefcake. So let me give you a couple observations for me to share as someone who is coming from a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max. Now this M1 Max, 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and it has 32 gigs of unified memory. Because of the way that Apple has optimized ProRes, since they are the people that created it, it runs very smooth on any Mac, not just the Mac Studio or the MacBook Pro, it runs very smooth. But because the amount of RAM that I have in the Mac Studio, 64 gigs, it really is effortless in my assessment. I think that's the biggest difference here is how much RAM that this device has, 32 gigs versus 64. And that's probably my lesson learned. If I were to buy another computer, I would buy something that has more RAM than 32 gigs. It really helps Final Cut run very smoothly. Really, it's buttery smooth. I'm able to add adjustment layers, color correction, video graphics on this, and there's really no hiccups, no type of slowdowns whatsoever with 64 gigs. And you know, really my timelines are, you know, they're 4K, I have color correction, I have color balance, I have some LUTs on there, uh, and they're usually very heavy in terms of graphics but this really helped me from a video editing standpoint. Now, in comparison to the MacBook Pro, it's a little bit, sometimes, you know, you see that hiccup, you feel it as someone who edits video with it, or when you're using any program, actually, if there's a little bit of a hang up, it's like a split second, you're like, oh wow, what's going on here? 
So that is the biggest difference in my opinion. Now I can tell you I was able to render the unboxing clip that I had here on the Mac Studio in 15 seconds in comparison to I think 19 seconds with the MacBook Pro. Not a huge difference there and in my opinion I don't know if it's really worth paying the additional money, $4,000, for that type of savings. Now, obviously if you do it every day, you know, there's some compound there, but for me, it's not necessarily a big difference. Additionally, I was able to do several other tests using both the MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio and Final Cut, which I'll uh, asterisk here, and it's a kind of a big asterisk. Final Cut 10.6.1 is what's out right now, but 10.6.2 is what Apple used in their tests when they talk about their specs. So it's really unclear at this point that Final Cut 10.6.1 has been optimized for the Mac Studio and the M1 Ultra. I don't think it has, and that's going to be one of the key factors in getting better speeds out of this. As software gets optimized for the M1 Ultra, you should see better performance in that, which would make sense why I am not seeing a huge difference between these two machines. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the amount of I.O. on the Mac Studio, which has been, I think, significant for me because I've been able to get rid of my OWC Thunderbolt dock which has three downstream ports on the back, one upstream port on the front, in addition to some USB-A ports. But because of the fact that those Thunderbolt 4 ports are shared resources, where here on the Mac Studio, they are individual and they are per bus, I'm able to get 45, or sorry, excuse me, 40 gigabits of throughput on the Mac Studio in comparison to all the data being channeled through that dock. Now, it's not something against OWC, that's just how Thunderbolt docks work. But for me, if I'm able to get rid of this, clean up my desk, as you can see on this angle, there's a lot of stuff on my desk at this moment. And because there is a lot of stuff on my desk, I always look for ways to improve my setup and kind of make it more minimal as much as possible. Now, does it make sense to uh, sell a $300 dock for a $4,000 computer or even a $2,000 computer? No, it doesn't. But that is my scenario specifically. So if you need something with more I.O., the Mac Studio, definitely something I would look into. Now, what I would tell you is that the MacBook Pro certainly is no slouch. And I chose this because of the portability of it. I do a lot of work at home. I do a lot of my editing at home in this room. I do it some upstairs in my other office. But I would say that for the most part, I am not necessarily sold on the benefit the Mac Studio provides me, though I still have about 10 days worth of kind of my return period before I make a final decision. If I were to keep it, the Mac Studio as a as a computer, I don't know if I would keep the uh, the version that I have here, the M1 Ultra, and I don't know if I would get the M1 Max. For me, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm still kind of on the fence. I probably talked myself in and out of it about a dozen times so far in the past 48 hours. So that is all I have for right now. Let me know what kind of questions you have down in the comments below regarding the Mac Studio, my workflow, whatever it is. I'm very active in the comments and I try to reply to everyone when uh, people are leaving comments. Let me know what kind of questions you have. My name is Mike, this is Tech 24 7 TV. I'll talk to you in the next one. Wait, what are you still doing here? I gotta go. No, no, you can't stay. That's why I said I have to go. Man.